What is going on guys, welcome to a new episode of Crossout. I know a lot of you guys have been asking me to do more commentary on Clan Wars, so this is definitely what we're gonna do. Now, the title, you might have noticed and thinking, what the shit is he talking about? But in general, yes, dog teams are still strong, but against this composition, dog teams literally can't do anything. Or I should say melee teams, because we also met a couple of hybrids where it's half harvest or half lances. And yeah, these guys just like they fell for this combination. Like they just they are underdogs in a situation like this because we have cap cans, we have a ton of decloaking power, and we have the mandrake to sort of pre fire whenever they decide to charge. So it's very hard for dog teams to even like just survive the tiniest bit against this composition. Um, and that is also why we run it so much because people still like to do like. The, the current meta which is just dog teams all the freaking time as you can see they are just getting nuked already because we have the cap cans to stop them and meanwhile we also have the decloaking power to stop them one mistake the guys made here is as soon as they started rushing um the left side we handled them all right so there was no point for them to not start uh, continue decloaking on right side so we let them in over there but it's all good then brew raptor sort of charged the melee guy i don't know why he decided to, to, to like you shouldn't ever do that when you have the possibility to stay out of range from him but he decided to charge which pinned me against the melee and him uh almost killing me but we ended up taking them down anyway it's just the scorpion hover left he decides to self-destruct because he can't do much and that's pretty much a wrap for the first round so now the boys are pretty much like they, they know what to do here at the second round so again we spread out we have two guys cover in the right side we have axilla cover and trains usually the reason that i want two guys on the right side and cover in uh, the warehouse as well is because most dog teams usually rush up through mid because they can stay out of sight from us for the longest time possible um like at this specific situation Brew raptor and tim could easily push up to the next cover up there and start decloaking from the tunnel as long as someone just keeps his eye on water if someone cloaks down through water you instantly go to there or sewer whatever you want to call that spot i don't know we haven't really given it a proper name the guys know what i mean when i say water so <laughs> that's all good i see the lance moving in here um so i basically just tried to hide from him uh, hoping that he would like sort of crash into that thing when i crashed into it he didn't though i like to use objects like I, I like to just ram into objects when i'm escaping from dogs because they don't expect that you know that sudden stop of movement um they usually just expect you to keep on going so that's why i, I usually like just like to drive straight in into things looking like i'm about to dodge it but then hitting it at the last second um but as you can see the melee teams are going down so easily here again we just have the decloaking power that they can't deal with and the harvester look at that guy he's just a harvester he literally doesn't even touch me because he's lost his spark so as soon as you get the sparks off which we do so efficiently with this composition and why it does so good those guys can do anything now at this point there's just two guys left one of them decides to go for me um and he's a cabin like his cabin actually deals more damage than a harvester so he's a bigger threat than a deal with a harvester he's d gun but he's still a bigger threat <laughs> and as you can see he took off a wheel so the uh like the final kill here is just me struggling to try to balance my build since the wheel is missing so whenever i start shooting the build tips over and then the mandrake shots just goes freaking everywhere and again as you can see for some reason pushing in to kill the melee for no reason whatsoever just they keep in a distance and strafe around until you can get an, an angle of firing um instead of like pushing into a melee because that will just make you take unnecessary damage uh, but yeah it's just a scorpion left again and it's from here just a shit show of me missing a ton of shots because i can't really figure where he wants to go uh hitting hovers with mandrakes is definitely the hardest thing it's doable but yeah he made some weird movements, so we ended up winning anyways. That's wrap for the first game. Let's get on to game number two. The second game is a full melee team, I actually think. I'm not 100% sure. We have a, a, a tiny frame freeze there in the uh, recording for some reason. But I'm almost 100% sure that it is a full melee team. You will see that in a second. Um, this game was a bit more stressful because... When we like actually started playing, some of the dudes in voice chat started stressing so freaking much about how they rushed us and all that stuff. 
um, even though like we can handle them so easily. But it's it, it can be a, a bit overwhelming at times when four dogs just come running. Um, but basically, just keep on doing what you do. And as you can see, like Rue Raptor, um, or not Rue Raptor, Tim not really shooting there to decloak. You always want to keep the machine guns heated up when the dogs are there about to come in. So you never ever stop firing if you're playing an aspect and you're playing versus a dog team. But this choke point is just so good when you play dog teams. Look at that, bro. He literally took so freaking much damage from one volley. Um, because you can just, like, they can't dodge your shots in any way when you choke them in here. Once they get through your defenses, though, it's a bit more stressful. Like, I should have left the, left the cap earlier. Um, or left the spawn a bit earlier. Probably should have done it as soon as I landed those first shots. Because I'm getting a bit pinned here. Luckily, he got, like, wedged on top of me. So he can't do much. But even though my position here, as you can see, you, you can barely hit them. But just barely. You can't really hit them. I'm still just trying to, like, get my build to wobble a bit back and forth in order to actually land some of the shots. But it doesn't really work. Good thing though, they are pretty crippled after that initial fight, so Axilla can actually fight off the last three dudes um, without much trouble, which is super nice, while I just, like he finishes two of them, while I just kite around uh, one of the guys, <laughs> and I really wanted that Drake kill here at the end, but sadly this ramp is not like, slanted enough for me to actually hit him with a Mandrix like five behind, so I just Drake myself, luckily Axilla kills him, like I wouldn't have done that if we hadn't had the victory just so you know <laughs> but that is it for the first round a, a pretty good pretty good first game um sad thing they have someone i think he rage quit it i don't know like he just left as he died um which is a bit sad like he's he's playing the most meta composition right now and the easiest one to just get a shit ton of games going so it could just be a disconnect let's just uh pray it's a disconnect and not a a, a rage quit but the second game here, um, yeah, it's it's pretty straightforward. Let's just be honest. It's a three versus four, so it's not going to be all that hard. We actually do struggle a bit again on the initial hits. But as you can see, the guys spread out way more here. We have covering fire on literally every freaking single entrance that they can come from. So they, as you can see, they are struggling to get in. We know somewhat from where they are coming. And that just makes life so much easier for us because now we can follow them on... On the radar, I can move like forward in a second because I see an enemy going through that place over there. And it, it's never really a struggle. They decide to not bother with me, so I just have a few free shots. And one of those shots land there. Boom. Over 2k damage on that dog. Easy peasy. And then they decide to turn for me. So we just basically round them off. Finish the second game in a beautiful way. Yeah. That's it for the Drake versus dog teams, pretty much. Like, it's so freaking easy when you play this composition. So if you do meet a lot of Drake teams, or a lot, not a lot of Drake teams, but a lot of dog teams, you should definitely consider going for a composition. Something like two Mandrakes and s some aspects, Reapers, whatever. For the third team, <coughs> we have a, like... Pretty mixed team. We have two dogs, I think, or three dogs. I don't remember. Uh, the recording lagged again at, at the beginning for some reason. I don't know why it does that. But they do have two dogs, and then they have a pulsar hover, and I actually don't remember the last enemy. So, finally, we actually meet up with a composition that challenges us a bit more than the, the last two compositions have done because of the amount of melee uh, enemies. So... What we do here is we push up to the first cover. We want to see where they want to go because usually dog teams just rush. So they do the same here. They go through banana sadly, so I don't really get to Drake much of them. And the classic uh, Drake myself thing happens again. That just happens. Like it, it happens because the build is a light build. So when I shoot the first Mandrake, the build bounces to the ground. So when I shoot the second Mandrake, the, that Mandrake's firing angle will be messed up big time because of that. But basically, I'm able to drag in both dogs here. Pretty nice. Drake behind me. Not a lot of hits there. But the thing is that I can actually kind around the dog for such a long time. Taking that I am a uh, taking that I'm a light fast build. So I do that. The reason that I didn't drive for the cap can was because I was afraid that I was going to get pinched by either of those two mates there sitting um, in front of me. So I decided to turn the other way around. But the kiting went okay. Like... My speed is still pretty good, so it takes a long time for him to catch up to me. And there we go. A nice hit on the pulsar that crippled him a lot. So he's basically like, yeah, 
he's messed up up there. He does not have a, a, a fun time up there. It's still a bit hard for me to land my shots as my I'm now missing a wheel again. Because that one pulse I hit actually took off my wheel. Um, making it a bit harder for me. But the, the boys are still in a pretty good shape. Like the dogs decided to go for me. Which just got them killed instantly pretty much. So we, we just push up on them. I push up because I want to see if I can get this hill. And actually like land shots because of that. And to dodge the guy coming from tunnels. He uh, decided to push towards our uh, spawn though. Because uh, we pushed the other Helios. Which was a good move by him. But... Rule Raptor can fight him okay, so he, uh, he he goes down quite quickly, and there we go. That's a wrap for the first round. The second round, we decide, like, and you guys might have realized by now that we actually, we, we camp a bit when we play this composition. <laughs> and the reason that we do so is because we want the people to push into the Mandrix. It's quite simple. And you want that with most long-range, um, like, long-range teams, as long as you have a map like this where there's so much open ground. It's it's pretty good to, to get that high ground, which we have right here. Get the high ground, wait for the enemies to arrive, and then just mess them up. Pre-fire at their locations and get some get some free hits in, basically. It's it's really that simple. It ain't all that hard. And as you can see, these guys, they, they sort of fall for the trick. Or I wouldn't say it's a trick, because you have to. Like, you can't just... They could have sat, sat in the tunnel, but... When they have to push out, the Mandrake will just be waiting for them, because they are behind one. So they will have to push and go for a final kill at some point. So it's it's really just a big advantage for us, being able to just wait it out until they actually decide to push us. Which we did. The reason that I take cover up here on the hill is just to try, try to not get hit by the initial dog push when they come. Because, do you remember that if they actually would have waited for the final minute or something, they just need one kill to end it. So if they go in the final second to try to kill me, then I'm messed up, like, pretty quickly. And we can't have that. <laughs> we want me to stay alive, to lay down some fire, because I am such a squishy target. Like, literally 600 HP and a bare minimum of what is required for spaced armor. And also, like, this is a Mandrick build, so there's ammo boxes and all that shit on it that can just blow up instantly. So this position is actually one that I prefer to take a lot. And also, you get that, do you see how I have that slant on my build? That slant will actually help me fire pretty much directly in front of me. Like, that cap can over there at Tim's place is no issue for me to hit at all, since I'm sitting on this hill. By now, we finished one of the dogs, and they decided to go for the cap, so I, I decided to, to fall down just to be able to push up if I need to and take bridge as cover instead. Because the bridge is another good position where you actually get so much overlook. So as they decide to push through the tunnels, I decided to just rotate to get out of like get out of the danger zone, so to say. Um, so, so sort of leaving Tim, yeah, but landing a ton of damage on the dude on cap to force him out there we go he's out of cap now we don't have to worry about them actually capturing him point anymore which means that we can sort of go back to the main focus which was killing off that dog and mission accomplished <laughs> by now i do not realize that one guy actually pushed up on my right which was a terrible map awareness by me um is what it is you can't be lucky every time he goes for me hard which makes it so much easier for axilla like axilla has Look at this the amount of suppressive fire he can lay down on that dude. <laughs> and he's just dead. Like, he's just gone so quickly. Here comes the last pulse of trying to push in. This thought he would stay on the ramp a bit more. That's why I put my shots there. Um, we're going to go, like, by each other now. And as you can see, he's badly wounded. Like, he's taken a lot of damage for those fights. So he's a pretty easy kill. I'm just chasing him down because I want to hit him with my mandrakes. Which I do. Nice. And that is it for this video, boys. I hope you enjoyed it. Let's just celebrate this win. Until next time, you guys must have an awesome day. And once again, thank you so much for 2,000 subscribers. Bye.